Sometimes ideas go well. Sometimes ideas don't go so well, but have a happy ending anyway. And sometimes, well, sometimes ideas just fail horribly. Such was the case with Disney's attempt at establishing dominance in the budding world of the internet with Go.com. What was Go.com and why did it fail? Well, first, let's set the scene. While the internet was technically around for quite longer, it really began to pick up steam with the consumer market in the mid-1990s, along with the continued growth of home computing. Disney saw that the internet was no longer some novelty, but a real potential industry in the making. The big thing at the time were specifically web portals. These portals were pages where users would log on and find all sorts of different content from different sources. They'd check their email, message their friends, look up stocks, read the news, all from one place. CEO Michael Eisner was dead set on Disney creating their own portal from scratch. After all, it was the mindset that had benefited Disney in the past. They backed out of letting external hotel chains build on Disney World property in place of designing and building their own, and things went great. They cut out the retail middleman by developing and opening Disney stores across the country that were, at the time, doing really well. They were even going through the motions of establishing their own cruise line. Doing things the Disney way worked well for Disney. However, not everyone was as confident. By this point, portals like AOL and Yahoo had already established a foothold on the internet, and some felt that the best path forward would be for Disney to outright acquire one of them. VP of Strategic Planning and eventual CFO Tom Staggs suggested that Disney spend $180 million for a 10 to 15% stake in Yahoo, with hopes they'd be able to work together on a portal. There were even suggestions that Disney buy AOL as it was growing in popularity. Eisner rejected the idea and told Staggs to quote, go back to the drawing board and come up with a plan to do this ourselves. Now, while Eisner wanted Disney to build a new portal themselves, he was okay with Disney acquiring companies to make that happen. In 1997, Disney purchased a one-third stake in the web design and management company Starwave, which was owned by Microsoft's Paul Allen. They paid a reported $100 million for it. That following January in 1998, Disney made their move by registering Go.com. Now, this next bit can be a little bit confusing, but stick with me here. A few months later in April, they exercised rights they had to buy out the remaining shares of Starwave, taking complete ownership of the company and totaling the money spent to get there to $350 million. Two months later, they purchased 43% of InfoSeek, the third most popular search engine at the time, for $70 million and Starwave. That next summer, Disney announced that InfoSeek would merge with Disney's own internet holdings into a new company called Go.com. Disney would own 72%, while InfoSeek shareholders would own the remaining 28%. Due to the previous deal in which Starwave was sold to InfoSeek, it'd be back in the fold with Disney under Go.com. It was a very complex and confusing process, and plenty of others agreed. Within hours of the news of the deal, InfoSeek shares dropped 10% on the stock market. Investors were worried by the fact that the stock in the deal wasn't Disney stock, but a tracking stock. Tracking stocks are shares that reflect the performance of a subsidiary company rather than a parent company. So in other words, if Go.com failed, but the entire rest of the Disney company did well, the Go.com shareholders would still be out of luck. In the end, through the confusing deal and all, Disney had Go.com as their own internet portal to lead them into the future. In just as many years it took to put together though, it would all fall apart. Why? Well, where do I begin? For starters, in 1999, Go.com Executive Vice President Patrick Naughton was arrested by the FBI for soliciting a minor across state lines. Over the internet, no less. As one would expect, he was fired for it, but regardless, the arrest ultimately did not look good for Disney, who otherwise tried to maintain a family-friendly image. Disney convinced ABC President Steve Borstein to run Go.com, and very quickly he realized what a mess things were. None of the Disney sites shared a coherent purpose or design, and it turned out that the different company cultures of Starwave and InfoSeek made working together quite difficult. In early 2000, things continued to go wrong for Go.com when they were forced by a judge to drop their original logo of a green stoplight with the word Go in it. It was found to be too similar to the logo for Go2.com, a search engine that existed before Go. 
Disney had to pay $21.5 million in damages to GoTo.com and rebrand their portal, which according to Disney was the result of a $40 million marketing effort. Go.com struggled and failed to catch up to leading portals like Yahoo and AOL. Beyond just a branding issue, Go.com lacked some of the features that were becoming commonplace online. Ultimately, for all of the talent and history behind Disney as an entertainment business, they were still a traditional media company trying to keep up with the new lightning fast speed of the internet. They were a part of a race and it didn't help that their insistence to build a portal from scratch meant that they started the race years after the competition. So in February of 2000, Borstein held a meeting with Disney leadership to put it plainly. Disney could not compete and the Go.com web portal was a failure. It would take a full extra year, but on January 29th, 2001, Disney would finally announce that they were shutting down Go.com and laying off over 400 employees. Despite the announcement, Disney actually didn't shut down Go.com right away. Later that year, they replaced their own search engine with, interestingly enough, the Go.to.com search engine. It wouldn't actually be until 2013 that they would finally retire the Go.com logo and replace the website with a Disney-branded landing page that is still there now. Today, you might still notice that some websites are hosted on the Go.com domain, but at this point, Disney does nothing to really brand it that way. Go.com was a costly failure for the Walt Disney Company. By the time the dust settled, the venture cost Disney just over $2 billion in losses, and they didn't have much to show for it. It was no doubt a humbling experience. Go.com just proves that no company, not even Disney, is immune from failure every once in a while.